All right, everybody. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. We are live. We got a number. You can call in now. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably watching the recording. So next week, you'll know that you can call into the show. Uh, it's new. So we didn't advertise a lot, but we got a lot to talk about this week. Uh, we are with the Adam Holt sports writer with sports uh, NFL writer with sportskeeda.com. Let's just get the show started. Let's just go. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's Tuesday. It is the morning after your fantasy week has concluded. Uh, we want to know how you did. We're going to talk about how we did. We're going to talk about the fantasy week in review. And of course, we're going to get you set up nice for week five. Uh, if you're watching on the show, you guys already know that it's it's like a podcast format, but we do it live uh, and we do it for you because we want you guys to join in. That's why we do this so that you guys can join in. Um, we watch you guys. What's up, Flexi? Uh, we got Fourth and Flex checking us out. Love to have those guys. Uh, feel free to uh, ask for the link. We will have it up so that you guys can join. We also have the number on the bottom of the screen so you guys can call in now, uh, which is kind of cool that you guys can call in. Um, and we'll put you on the show. Anyway, let's get to it. Adam is here. Adam Holes, NFL writer for at sportskeeda.com at Adam Hole Sports on the Twitter X. I don't even know what to call it now. Do we call it Twitter? Do we call it X? Or we is it Twitter? I I, I don't know. Um how was your fantasy weekend, Adam? Decent fantasy weekend. I'd say, you know, just this week as a whole, a lot less surprises this week, I feel, than like a lot of the other weeks. Not even maybe so much from like the fantasy football side, but from your NFL side, right? There weren't the right. big upsets this week. Like we had a handful of them the week before. This was kind of like uh, they are who we thought they were kind of week, right? Like the teams who were supposed to win, quote unquote, kind of did win. You know, maybe not your Steelers. That was a game that I thought that the Steelers would win. The Browns game I thought would go differently, but with Watson getting ruled out last second, that kind of changed things. But just in general, not a whole lot of surprises jumping out at me this week. Thank you, Bandy. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe, too, because it's a lot of fun over there on the Fantasy Sports Core uh, with everyone else. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, it's funny that you bring up the Steelers. I actually did pick them. Uh, for the upset to get upset by Houston Houston uh, we're going to talk more about as we go obviously when we did our uh, preseason predictions it was all Pittsburgh but uh, things have clearly you know changed a little bit in the NFL and yeah Stroud he's playing from behind uh, and he is he looks like the it. real deal he, he, really he kind of does. I don't want to I don't want to get too crazy with it but he is kind of starting to look like the real deal um, you mm -hmm. can check out the uh yeah thanks bandy it's absolutely true the Steelers are looking uh, more than a little rough um you know they can get to the quarterback they're they're blasting that line but they're not doing much about it um once they get there um but yeah what i was going to say is is uh well you can read all about my prediction on true serum football i do a round table every week i was on there and i did predict that upset so uh the writing was on the wall the writing's on the wall of the steelers they're not improving and so, and Houston is. Houston's playing. They're playing hard. <clears throat> they're playing from behind, which makes a difference. Uh, we're going to talk about that when we do the review here in just a second about where quarterbacks finished this week. And, uh, you know, you brought up the teams that were supposed to win kind of did. And, and I would agree with that for the most part, except for the Cincinnati Bengals. We're going to have to talk about them because mm -hmm. they are not looking good. They look to be in trouble. Um, let's go ahead and. I mean, if you if you're ready, I'm ready to kind of get into the 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 week in review, if you will. Are you you ready to do I'm this? Ready. Let's, Let's do, do this. Yep. There we go. We're gonna rewind your fantasy week right here. Let us know how you did. Let us know who worked, who didn't work, who was supposed to work, and who really came through that maybe you weren't expecting to, or maybe you saw something that no one else saw. We're gonna start uh with the QBs like we always do. Um in the QB room, we had Allen jump up seven spots to number one. We you expected a big performance out of Allen. I think the big surprise in this game was that Tua didn't show up the way that we thought he was going to. 
He did in the beginning. I mean, the first five drives of the game were all five touchdowns. They just went back and forth. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. Five touchdowns in a row. And then the Bills kept it going, and the Dolphins disappeared. The Bills' defense stepped up in a big way and kind of shut them down for the rest of the game. And, you know, I'm not surprised that the Bills won. I'm surprised that they blew them out the way that they did. Yeah, that that was the thing. It was the blowout. We, we said in the teaser – you know, Bills established dominance. They established dominance early, uh, and they clearly have the inside track on this division. I mean, it's going to be the Bills and Miami sitting there at the end, obviously. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see what improvements or de-escalations, of course, how the injuries uh, change this matchup as it happens. But both of these teams are going to the playoffs. It's just yeah. who's going to be the division winner and who's going to be the wild card. That's kind yeah. of where these two teams stand. It's really crazy. Uh, I want to jump ahead a little bit. We got Bandy bringing up the Bengals. The Bengals, man, what mm-hmm. the F is happening? Um, I actually can say that word, but I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> what the F is happening? And so we'll jump ahead to them since Bandy brought it up. And that's exactly, I mean, that's, you can't really sum it up better than that. What What the hell is happening in Cincinnati right now? To me, it's very simple. Burrow is not healthy. Yeah. When you watch him play these last few weeks, he's not moving around. They're just designing these plays where it's just quick catch, sometimes not even a three-step drop. They're putting him in a lot of shotgun, catch the snap, throw the ball, catch the snap, throw the ball. That's not Burrow's game. No. Burrow drives the ball downfield. He gets chased downfield and Higgins and all these guys running around and these big crossing routes and all this stuff. He can't do that right now because he is not healthy. So unless he gets healthy, I don't know if that means taking him out for a game or two and letting him rest up. Kind of like, by the way, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase suggested that before the season, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Jamar Chase kind of said, i kind of like to see Joe Burrow take the first couple games off and get healthy because we need him more later than we do in the beginning of the year. Because that's the confidence that, you know, they're going to figure it out and they're going to make the playoffs and they need Burrow later. But if he keeps playing like this, they might not be making the playoffs. They look like a disaster. They can't score the ball. And by the way, if you read into some point spreads and point lines, Vegas was kind of telling you that the Bengals were going to struggle again in this game. They were only two and a half point favorites against the Titans. That's a big red flag right there. And that's everybody kind of taking notice that right now, Joe Burrow is not Joe Burrow. Obviously, let us know what you think at home because uh, we want to hear from you guys as well. But I mean, that really is what it is. It's Burrow's injury. It's his inability to move and his inability to plant. I saw a stat that in the first half, he had like one, one pass that went beyond 10 yards. Yeah. Um, you know, that the air yards was over 10. Burrow's the problem. And it's not his, you know, quote unquote fault. He's injured. Right. He's hurt. And it's affecting his game. Burrow's the problem. That's what's happening is that Burrow needs to get healthy. And until they, um, swallow it it's kind of like the thing in fantasy we you have the same problem in fantasy you see a bad matchup you know it's a bad matchup mm-hmm. and you still just can't sit that guy um, yeah. and and you end up you know with a low score you know, season like not just with burrow but when these situations happen with quarterbacks in particular right mm-hmm. like what is the right move here like do you give burrow props for gutting it out and getting on the field or do you blame him like, dude, like, do your team a favor and sit out a couple games? Stop well, I think demanding that... to play because you're the guy and you're the franchise quarterback and you make the big money. And it is kind of Burrow's call, right? Because he's not injured enough that the doctors haven't said you can't play, right? Right, but this but has like, got to be a coaching thing. Here? Because this he's is why you pay a coach. Right now. He's hurting his team right now. Yeah, this is why he you pay a coach, perform. though. It's yeah. not like that. It's not like the NBA where the coach is just kind of there, um, and that's not true everywhere. That's not a blanket statement, but in a lot of a lot of places, that's how it is. But uh, in the NFL, the coach is there to make the big decisions and and take the mm-hmm. heat one way or the other. So this is a situation where the coach has to stand up and be like, "Hey, Joe, you're going to sit. Um, I know you don't want to. I appreciate it. Your team loves you. Your team wants you on the field. We want you on the field, but you're you're going to sit this one." Um, and when that and happens, you know, that's the old school mindset. The players run the show these days. The they do, and he got particular run like, the show with these new school, especially younger coaches like Zach hey, Taylor. He's got his bag. He's got his money. It doesn't matter if he mm-hmm. sits or not. Um, another team just like that, because I want to segue into that, is the New Orleans Saints. And, of course, the New Orleans Saints get schlacked 
this weekend mm-hmm. by Tampa Bay, uh, which was kind of crazy to see it go down that bad. Um, but they did. If you if you're a Mayfield guy, you were loving it. Uh, I'm looking for my notes here. Yeah, uh, Tampa Bay. We both had picked. Uh, let me find this one. Yeah, we both had picked New Orleans for this one in the pre preseason rundown. Um, deservedly so. Saints had a great defense, and we talked about Burrow being the problem. Carr. Carr is also the problem in this game. Um, he's been great for the team. He's hurt. He had one pass that uh, with 10 yards through the air the entire game. The entire game he threw one ball over 10 yards. He could do nothing but check down, and that's why you had Alvin Kamara uh, with 33 yards on like double-digit catches. It, it Carr never should have played, and that's another situation where the coach has to yeah. say, Carr, we like you, we love you, we want you out there. Winston's going to do fine for this one. You're going to sit down. I mean, you have yeah, to know. It's, it's a tough decision started. even for the coach, right? Because it's like, what's better, you know? Like, your starter who, like, may be a little bit hobbled or your backup who's a backup for a reason, you know what I mean? It's like that great debate, and, like, you see both sides of it. You know, I mean, look at Mahomes last year when he hurt his ankle and played through it all the way, hobbling around the field, hopping on one leg. And everyone's like, oh, look how tough Patrick Mahomes is. Look how he gutted it out and he still got through it. Was that the right move by Andy Reid? Or kind of like this situation, is the coach supposed to step in and say, Patrick, you're too hurt. We're going to go with the backup. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of goes both ways. And it kind of puts the coach in no man's land because I don't even know what the right decision is, you know? Can't you look at something, though, as the game is on, as the game is going on, and by the first half, you know that your quarterback can't throw the ball down the field. Yeah. And that's what you're banking on. You've got Michael Thomas, you've got Christian, uh, uh, excuse me, you've got Olave, mm-hmm. and they operate in open space down the field. And yes, you've got Kamura, but you can't, Kamura can't work the short stuff if you can't do the long stuff. It's very, it's evident very early on in that game that Carr cannot throw the ball. So the defense just says, load the middle, keep one safety back because he can't get it back there anyway in case someone squirts through and just go after him, go after him, go after him. It's not a hard game plan. At that point, like, the coach can go home. Like, here, mm-hmm. here's what you do, guys. Clog the middle, go after the quarterback, keep one safety. I, I'm, I'm out of here. See you later. I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. It, it's not hard. I could have coached Especially that when you have and you invested in a good backup like Jameis Winston. He's yeah. there for these situations, right? They mm-hmm. are one of the teams who has a legitimate backup quarterback, like the Colts just did with Gardner Minshew and Anthony Richardson. Why invest in such a good backup quarterback if you're not going to use them when it's time to use them? Absolutely true. Um, let's go to – well, let's go to your team. Let's go to Dallas. Mm. Dallas mm. handled business. They come back. They're setting up the showdown for next week, which is going to be oh, a fantastic yeah. game. It really should. They look strong. Micah Parsons is tired of the disrespect. Come out on Twitter today. Absolutely disgusted by the fact that they're still getting disrespect the fact of the matter is no matter how good they played this week that arizona loss is going to overshadow them for a little while uh they they can redeem it next week against san francisco but you know they took a loss and we talked about it last week they just had to throw that one away and and shake it off and come out and do something and they absolutely did this week yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to disagree a little bit. Like, I don't think that the Arizona loss does overshadow this. I think this was kind of proving that that Arizona game was a fluke. Like, I don't mean for necessarily from that. a from a you know um, a professional perspective, but from the fantasy from the fan perspective, from the hater perspective, uh, you know, things well, like I mean, that. Haters I are haters, you know, but you know, well, like if yeah. we're talking about reality here, that was simply a game that they were looking past it. They got a little bit cocky, a little bit overconfident. And as you know, you can't do that in the NFL. But let's just remember their three wins haven't come against very good teams. It's the Patriots, the Jets, and the Giants. But to their credit, they have destroyed all three of those bad teams. I think they kind of assumed that they were going to do the same thing to the Cardinals the Cardinals had other ideas and they decided to show up that day and the Cowboys weren't ready to compete 
on that level that day because they underestimated them. And it happens fairly often in the NFL. But I think this was more proven that that game was a fluke. And look, like everybody's heard that, you know, this is Bill Belichick's biggest loss of his entire career as a head coach. Losing by 35 points, first time he's ever yeah. lost by 35 points Huge. in his career. To me, two other very important statistics that I saw coming after this game. The Cowboys have now won 10 games in a row at home. When they play in Dallas, they're on a 10-game winning streak at home. This one, to me, even more significant. When Dak Prescott does not throw an interception, they have now won seven games in a row, including the postseason. Look, and it took to the end of the game in that Arizona game. They had it, and then Dak throws the interception. It was a horrible interception. Yeah. It was Daniel Jones-esque. We can talk about that in a little bit. Um, yeah. But this week, you're right. No interceptions. The stat that surprised me, uh, two of them, are the stats for Ramonde Stevenson and Tony Pollard this week. Pollard finishes at RB28, very underutilized. Uh, and they say it was on purpose. And you had uh, Ramonde, Ramondre, again, coming in low, uh, RB43. And I understand Ramondre didn't have much of a shot, and it really should have been Zeke's revenge game. Um, but, you know, because of the, this Dallas defense, they're just playing so well. But the underutilization, and maybe it was just game script, game plan, but especially for the Cowboys, for Pollard not to be utilized that much. I don't know, riding on the wall, just resting him for the rest of the season, keeping him healthy for next Sunday. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, to me, I'm okay with it. In a blowout game, if you can give Pollard a little bit of rest, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, Keep him as fresh as you can as the year goes on. The Cowboys were destroying that game. It was clear from the start that the Patriots offense had absolutely nothing for the Cowboys defense. That was evident very early in that game. Everyone watching it knew it. The Patriots knew it. The Cowboys knew it. So if you could rest Pollard a little bit and just trust that your defense is going to completely shut them down like they did, why not? Out of 32 teams, Mac Jones finishes 33, QB 33 this week. That tells you Mm -hmm. what the issue is in New England. Um, we transit. We just follow the yellow brick road right to San Francisco. CMC looking like the MVP candidate uh, this week. I mean, there's still a lot of season to go, but we're not going to take anything away from what CMC did yesterday. Absolutely fabulous. Exact, exactly why they brought him in. Never count CMC out until he's actually out. Uh, that guy balled yesterday. Uh, but let's not also forget that Brock Purdy gets the job done yet again. No interception still. Which exactly what you want from the Yeah, fantastic. And one in completion, 20 and uh, 21. It, Beautiful game. I, I, it goes six for six on his catches. I mean, it was just the perfect game. It was the perfect storm against the, you know, Arizona, who'd been playing well. Let's be honest. Our defense had been stepping up. They've been playing well. But as you said at the beginning of the show, the teams that this was an exact situation where the team that was supposed to win did, and they won exactly how they were supposed to win. They absolutely dominated. Yeah, I mean, to Arizona's credit, at least, in the second half, it was still a pretty competitive game. You oh, know, they came back. Later. Look, I, I mean, it never felt like Arizona was going to win that game, but it was no. late in the third quarter, and it was still a one-possession game before San Francisco ran away late. So credit again to Josh Dobbs, So whatever they're doing over there in Arizona, we all knew they'd be a bad team this year, and they have been a bad team this year, but at least they're getting up to play every game, and they're competing, and they're giving teams a run for their money. So, Again, following the Yellow Brick Road as it goes on, you talk about Arizona, you talk about Josh Dobbs, Dobbs, however you want to say it. QB8 this week. Mm -hmm. Teams playing from behind. We talked last week about the fantasy impact a QB can have, they don't, in fantasy, your QB doesn't have to win. And in a lot of cases, it's actually better if they don't, so long as they're competent enough to be competitive. And that's kind of the difference between a, a QB you don't want, a losing QB that you do or don't want in fantasy. Right now, Dobbs is someone you want. QB8, again, in the loss this week, and he's kind of been doing it all season. Uh, I don't know if it's going to last, but it's working right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, he looks like a competent NFL quarterback. That's what he looks like. Now, he's not a top 10 guy. He's not a top tier type of quarterback. But he's proven that, you know, in a bind, he can be a filling starter for certain teams. Or moving forward, he can be one of those 
Minshew's Winston's that we've talked about that make for that top class of backups to have on your team that can come in when he's needed. Yeah. Does anybody, do you have Dobbs on your team out there? Let us know. Or you, would you start him? Would you start Dobbs in the right situation? Uh, who else? How did your fantasy weekend go? Let us know in the comments, or you can even call us. Number's right there on the screen, 757-598-EFIN. That's 3346. Give us a call. Uh, we'll take it. Tell us about your fantasy weekend. Love to hear from you guys. Um, Guys playing from behind who are successful. You've got Richardson, who ends up at QB2. you got Fields, who ends up at QB3. Uh, Dobbs, of course. you got Russell Wilson there at QB9. From the same game, you got top 10 quarterbacks, Fields and Wilson. Uh, and I'm not going to say it wasn't expected. I think it was expected, maybe more so from, from, I don't know, more so from Fields or more so from Wilson. I don't know, but everybody there kind of, putting up big numbers, but especially from the QB perspective, but that's the difference between QBs who can play from behind. Uh, You can throw Stroud's name in there too, even though they were in control of this game the whole time, but Stroud putting up nice fantasy numbers this season because they're playing from behind. Whereas you have someone like a Daniel Jones last night uh, that it doesn't matter. He does still finish at QB 24, um, but that was an ugly, ugly game for Daniel Jones. So on your fantasy roster, your QB doesn't have to win. They just have to be competent at playing from behind. Uh, Tell us about your weekend. Tell us how it handled out, but what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've talked about that a few times, you know, kind of on this show about, you know, the playing from behind quarterbacks can hold some value because of the volume that they're going to throw passes. The other thing that jumps out again to me this week, and it's another concept that we know about quarterbacks, when you look at the top 10 quarterbacks this week, a lot of Russian quarterbacks in there. And it again drills home the point of the value of having a Russian quarterback in fantasy football. Fields, obviously, being the prime example of that, you know, I mean, he had a good growing week this week for once, but, you know what I mean, his legs can carry him. Anthony Richardson has been a stud because of his rushing numbers, because he's getting rushing touchdowns and rushing yards. There's so much value in those mobile quarterbacks, and that's why they get so heavily targeted in fantasy drafts now. Listen, let's talk about running quarterbacks. QB1, Allen, dude can run. Two, Richardson. Fields is three. Lamar is four. We're going to come back to Lamar because, oh, my God. Uh, Herbert is five. Hertz is six. Mayfield is seven. All right. Wilson is nine. Known for his running. I don't know if he's as mobile as he was. We already talked about Dobbs at eight and Stroud at ten. Stroud really the only guy that hasn't stood out in the NFL as a running quarterback. Now, if you follow him in college like I did, you know kid can kids got wheels. Kid can run. But that's not what they're doing in Houston right now. So uh, we're not going to lump him in with an NFL running quarterback, but all nine of those other guys, they run and they set up plays because they can run and their teams definitely have game plans and definitely have parts of their game that center around the fact that these guys can run. So that's a fantastic point. Yeah. And again, like that's why it's become such a popular trend and more and more so recently that these mobile quarterbacks are getting targeted so high in drafts. I mean, Justin Fields was like a top six quarterback in, you know, most fantasy drafts this year, despite yeah. the fact that the guy never even throws for 200 yards or more than one touchdown in a game. Well, the guy finally gave you what you drafted him for yeah. uh, this week. Uh, you got to look at the defense. Denver's going to be the defense all year that everybody's going to pick on. I thought it was going to be Arizona. A lot of people did. It's Denver. Pick on Denver's defense. Uh, that's two weeks in a row. They've gotten absolutely destroyed and lit up. Go out. Somehow he still playing. found a way to lose. Somehow he still found a way to lose that game. Good job, Chicago. Look, Chicago's on the mm-hmm. clock, and I think you know we put it in the teaser. Chicago's on the clock. The Broncos are looking at number two, and both these teams are looking to draft a quarterback. What do you think about that? Well, I think whoever's the number one pick, and it's looking more and more likely like it's going to be Chicago. Let's not forget too, Chicago also has the Panthers first round pick so they essentially have two shots at getting the number one overall pick right now they have the numbers one and number two overall pick in this draft it's going to be Caleb Williams you know like there's nothing Justin Fields can do at this point that if the Bears get the first overall pick they're taking Caleb Williams whoever gets that pick unless you know like Williams I mean, is going know, first, and Penix Jr. is going second. Doesn't take Caleb Williams with the team that might be the number one pick. Cardinals will take Caleb Williams. Bears will take Caleb Williams, despite yeah. those teams having, some would argue, a legitimate starting quarterback. 
You know, they obviously have their, their issues, but I mean, they just paid Tyler a quarter of a billion dollars, but I still think they would take Caleb if they had the number one pick. <laughs> Injured list. Brian says, I can't, it's supposed to be can't, I can't stomach hearing Daniel no, Jones name again. Please refer to him only as day Brown project part two, uh, failed project at that. Thank you, Brian, for throwing that out there. Um, as long as Jones got brought up, we'll go to the Monday night game. We're kind of bouncing around. We're just kind of following uh, where the talk goes. Daniel Jones looked like absolute garbage. He tried, uh, but he was very successful at looking like garbage against a vulnerable Seattle team. Uh, when their quarterback went down, Seattle definitely could have been beaten by a lot of teams this weekend. It was not the Giants. Look, we called the Giants out at the beginning. We said they were a fraud. We said they weren't gonna go anywhere they said they, you know we they weren't as, as good as they were last year and they weren't good last year this is not a surprise to anybody on this show nope i mean go back and listen to our giant season preview right i mean yeah. there weren't many wins that we were getting the giants this year i had them way below what public consensus is on how many wins they thought the giants would have this season and they just keep proving it week after week and when it comes exactly. to daniel jones my point with Daniel Jones before the season and still is now, I mean, he's still an okay fantasy quarterback. My point before the year was he's a great fantasy quarterback to have. He finished in the top 10 last year, but he is an awful NFL quarterback. I wouldn't want my team to have Daniel Jones as their starting quarterback, especially making $40 million a year when before last season, they were ready to move on from him. They did not pick up the fifth-year option on his rookie contract. They said he's got one more year, and next offseason, we're going to figure out our quarterback situation. He had kind of a breakout year in his first year with Dayball. He had that huge game against the Vikings in the playoffs, and here we are with Daniel Jones making $40 million a year. Once they get the money, I said it, I've been saying it for years, once they get the money, watch the numbers go down. Even if it is from an injury like Joe Burrow, once they get the money, watch the numbers go down. Someone who's trying to prove me wrong is Lamar Jackson, Uh, but he's not doing it with his arm. And we talked about that during the preseason as well when we did our record predictions that Lamar's not going to beat you through the air, but good night. Could that kid run? He did throw two. He pat, he ran two through two. Lamar went off. He was the only thing. Lamar and Andrews are the only thing. I was on uh, TSS Wake Up on Sunday morning, as I am every week, telling you who not to play. Uh, did really good on it. Put that on Instagram and Twitter. You can see how I did this week. Uh, Lamar's the only one I missed on. I said don't play anybody in Baltimore offense. Obviously, Andrews is exempt. Uh, but... I said don't play Lamar. Lamar had horrible stats, but he definitely proved me wrong this week. And I feel sorry. I, I, I formally apologize if you listened to me and didn't play Lamar because he finishes QB4 and for good reason. Top 10, top 5, two weeks in a row. Um, he's the only thing Baltimore's got going, but he's definitely going. Yeah, I mean, you know, if anyone had any doubt before the year started, there's no doubt anymore. He's the best Russian quarterback of all time. You know, not just in the NFL, but ever, ever. And a case can be made that he's also one of the best running backs in the NFL currently. He just doesn't play the running back position. It's kind of like, you know, Kelsey's one of the best receivers in the NFL, even though he's a tight end. Lamar is one of the best running backs in the NFL, though he plays quarterback. Uh, NFL showing a lot of inconsistency. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, your top running backs, CMC, uh, Montgomery, who's kind of surprised and looking to get a lot more work with Gibbs coming up injured. We got Kyron, of course, Williams. Uh, surprise, I say of course, but uh, top 10, I'm not surprised. Top three, you know, you look for the game script. Uh, Achan, I did not expect there to be back. To be back. I thought that was like, a, you know, I figured he'd do well. Uh, I, he'd get some playing time. Didn't expect him to be QB4. And... King Henry, is he back or did he just have a good game? I guess we'll find out as it goes on, but it was nice to see King Henry uh, do what you drafted him for this week. Yeah, I mean, a chain too. I mean, he did that with, I think it was 10 touches. That's all he got this week and still went over 100 yards and he's scoring touchdowns. It seems like every time he touches the ball now, um, he's obviously a guy to invest in for the rest of this season because he's still playing 
kind of second fiddle to Moster, but they're both producing with both of them sharing the load. And if Achan keeps this efficiency up and producing at this clip, he's going to earn more touches going forward. Yeah, it, it was just nice to see it. I don't know if it'll carry on. That's that's what you have to worry about there. But maybe a, a sell, maybe a time to sell Henry, or just decide that you're going to keep him. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm kind of out on it still. Let's do as we come around the uh, bend at, at the top of the hour. Let's do a quick recap of how we did with our preseason predictions. Uh, where we predicted every game for every team throughout the year. A little crash there. Um, it's the record watch. This week, we both went 9-7. and seven. Uh, Home teams went 8-8 eight and eight versus visitors again. Uh, you and me went nine and seven. And so we remain tied at 37, 27 on the season. We're still well above 500, uh, notable games that we missed on, of course, was the Pittsburgh game. Uh, like I said, I called Houston this week, but during the preseason predictions, I absolutely did not. Um, you get the Denver comeback. Otherwise I would have had it, uh, Let's see. I got the Lions. You got, uh, what was it? You got the uh, Minnesota game. One of the games I actually said Carolina was was going to uh, win. Uh, let's see. We matched up pretty much everywhere else across the board. Oh, let's get into this one. New York and Kansas City. Kansas City beats New York. I had the Jets beating Kansas City because that's when Aaron Rodgers was still there. And the reason I want to talk about this game is because you brought up bad quarterbacks playing well. Zach Wilson looked decent, Mm. decent enough Mm -hmm. to play against Kansas City. There's another team that's kind of in trouble right now, not really stopping anybody. The offense is not cranking the way it should. Kelsey finishes at tight end eight. Mahomes isn't even in the top ten yet again. I think he's only been in the top ten once all year. Um, So Kansas City in trouble. Wilson looking okay, and he's got a good matchup next week as well. Yeah, I mean, I need to see it more from Wilson than just that one game. I mean, oh, yeah, he sure. was very good for a large portion of that game, but he started the game very bad. He ended the game bad as well with the fumble. Uh, the whole middle portion, he played fantastic. By far his best game of his career so far. But again, I need to see it at least one more time before I change my opinion at all on Zach Wilson of him being the worst starting quarterback in the entire NFL. Well, you might see it one more time, and they got Denver next week. So I actually kind of expect Wilson to show up again next week uh, against Denver and kind of have, you know, the Bears and the Jets kind of having a similar game to what we had this week with the Bears and Denver. So Denver Jets, you know, might be a good know place to play some quarterbacks. I don't know. Like, I don't know if I can expect Zach Wilson to show up anywhere. He has a large enough sample size in his career that he's been very bad. So one, you know, three quarters of the game that he was really good isn't going to make me think that he's going to be very good next week. But against Denver struggling defense, he has a chance to, but I'd say at best a 50-50 chance, but it's probably less than that. I'm probably not going to like draft him and start him on my team or anything like that, but I, I don't know. Maybe DFS might be a real cheap DFS play. I don't know. There's a lot of issues going on right now in the NFL. We talked about Burrow. We could talk about Kansas City. I don't know what we're all going to talk about, but NFL writer Adam Holst is going to bring up some things. We're going to do the uh, new segment called, right now we're calling it the Rapid Holst Check. We may just change it to the Holst Check. We're going to check the Holst or the Pulse of the NFL with NFL writer Adam Holst. The floor is yours, Adam. Oh, okay. I mean, I I thought you were going to throw a couple things at me that we were going to rapid fire through. We can do that things, too. But, we can but, do that too. You just want, you know, floor is mine. That, that's fine also. I'll let you bring them up and then we'll bounce from there. How about that? Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, when we introduced this new segment, I guess I thought. It was something other than it is, but if we're going to do it this way, let's do it this way. I thought you were going to rapid fire just. We can do that. Let's do that this week. A couple names, a couple this, a couple that, and I just give like a quick five second pulse, like where I'm at with it. 
All right, let's do that. We'll do that for this one, and then we'll get it all locked down for next week. Like I said, it's new. We're okay to do new things and, and, and new. try some stuff We're out. We're live all the time, you know? Like, yeah. this is you guys hearing what's going on live right now. So, let's there do you it. go. Let's do it. Uh, we're in Kansas City. What's wrong with Kansas City right now? I mean, they're not putting up the numbers like they used to, but they're winning games. So I'm sure Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are happy enough with what's going on. Travis Kelsey's at eight, and I don't know where Taylor Swift is in the rankings. I didn't see it. Um, if you go to Sleeper and look up Travis Kelsey, you'll see Taylor Swift's picture. Yeah. We put that out. It's kind of interesting. Um, way too much publicity and media going there i'm ashamed of myself for even bringing up her name um but travis kelsey's at eight the wide receiver room is ugly mahomes is not hurt to what we know they've had nice matchups other than the jets i mean you know the jets is a tough matchup that's a tough defense i'm okay with that one but is there just something are they still just not clicking i know the wide receiver isn't wide receiver room isn't strong but that hasn't seemed to matter so far Give them time. They'll be just fine as the year goes on. There was a lot of changes to personnel, again, on offense, to the receivers in particular. It's the Chiefs. They're winning games. Patrick Mahomes is still getting it done, though he's not lighting up the stat sheet. And give it a few weeks from now, and we're all going to be talking about how great this offense is again when he starts rattling off 300-plus yard games every week. If you remember last year, he got off to a little bit of a slow start last year as well. And then by the end of the year, he was the clear cut, easy MVP pick, especially when Jalen Hurts got injured. Uh, where was it? Uh, Baltimore. Baltimore can't do anything without Lamar. Uh, I said, don't play any of the offense. I was right not to play any of the offense. Lamar cannot carry this team through the entire season on his own. Just him and, and Mandrews, can he? I guess Kansas City does it. But they're not Kansas. I mean, maybe he can. You know, like maybe he can. Like they've been leaning on Lamar for a long time. I mean, I know the Browns went to backup quarterback kind of last minute with Watson getting ruled out late. That was a tough adjustment, obviously. But let's not forget either. Lamar just did that without receivers, without his starting running back. A lot of injuries on Baltimore as well. He did not have his offensive cast around him. It didn't matter. He dominated. Again, the Chargers. One of the best defenses in the league, too, by the way. The Chargers have been without Eckler. Uh, they lose Williams. It hasn't mattered. They've had nice matchups. Don't get me wrong. They played Las Vegas, of course. They had Minnesota, um, Miami in game one. Are they just setting us up again? Look, I mean, the Chargers are going to be the Chargers, right? It, 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 you know, like it's like the same story every year with the Chargers. Like you look at them on paper and it's like, wow, what a great team they are. Then you watch them on the field and somehow they manage to not be that good all the time. And they blow games late and they make stupid coaching decisions. And, you know, Chargers are going to charge her. Uh, Houston, Stroud, is he the guy? You got Nico, you got Tank Dell, you got Stroud. Schultz even gets involved this week. Uh, they played Pittsburgh, so let's not get you know crazy with it. But they also have Atlanta uh, up next. They got New Orleans after that, and New Orleans defense is good. Uh, they've got Carolina after the bye. These are winnable games. Is Houston better than we thought? No, I mean, I don't think Houston is necessarily better than we thought. I still don't think they're going to win a whole lot of games. They're going to be competitive. But I do think that C.J. Stroud is the real deal. I think he's ahead of schedule by a lot. He's putting up, like, historic-type numbers for his first four games. Like, he's in classes with, like, Herbert and Mahomes with what, with the way they exploded onto the scene. He's not getting as much hype as those guys. But when I watch Stroud play, he reads defenses not like a rookie quarterback that's only played four games. And that is a huge encouraging sign for his future. And look, guys like Nico, guys like Tank Dell, they're pretty good wide receivers, but it's not like he's doing this with a loaded offense. Their offensive cast is still one of the worst in the NFL. It's bottom 10, his supporting cast around him, and he's still doing this the way he's doing it. Watch out for C.J. Stroud. He might be that next big young quarterback in the NFL. The Rams are going to get cut back. Uh, is Puka going to disappear? Are they going to be able to keep riding this? They get cut back as they 
have to play Philly, but then they get Arizona and Pittsburgh after that. Um, are the Rams for real, or are they just, you know, getting lucky? Here's what I'm going to say. I think now is the time to sell high on Puka Nakua. If you have him on your fantasy teams, it might be time to swap him out now. We don't know if Cup's coming back this week or when he's coming back. McVay has just kind of been kind of vague, saying he hopes to have him back soon. We have no idea what that means. We don't know how many more games he's going to miss. But when Cup comes back, I'm not saying Puka Nakua is going to completely disappear, but he's not going to be getting 15 targets a game like he's getting now, which is not going to happen because he's going to have to share some of that with Cup. I think they both can eat. But I think Puka's probably at the absolute highest value that he's ever going to be. So if you can swap him for another big-time asset, do it. All right, there we go. That is a rapid hole check with the Adam Hole slow on the fly. Uh, we will set that up a little bit better for you next week. Uh, but that's how the rapid pulse check goes with NFL writer at sportskeeda.com slash Adam Hulse. It is Adam Hulse at Adam Hulse Sports on the Twitter, Twitter X, whatever we're calling it now. Uh, let's start talking about this week. This week we've got, again, we've got some nice matchups out there. There's definitely some defenses to be taken advantage of. Um, I don't know. what. Obviously, the game of the week is going to be San Francisco and Dallas. To, to me, that's a no-brainer. Uh, and we will get into that. But before we do, we got the Bears at Commanders on Thursday night. Thursday nights have been actually pretty good up until this week. I don't, I, I don't know about this Bears Commander silliness. I don't know. I mean, I think doing. Brian Robinson's a great play for fantasy this week for sure against that Bears defense. Um, mm -hmm. He's kind of the only guy that I'm like excited about. Khalil Herbert with a big breakout week this week. He finally had that explode game that a lot of people drafted him as a sleeper thinking he had a lot of upside hasn't really done it yet but finally did it uh last week let's see if in week five he builds off of that or if he goes back down to like his 10 touches a game like he was getting previously uh jags at bills in london the jags stay there the bills if you watch the broadcast the bills stole their hotel this week the jags had to move hotels uh, mm -hmm. Because the Bills are taking their hotel. I don't know how that worked or how that gets booked. Well, it's because the Bills are the home team this week. That's how that works. Against the Falcons. That the matters Jags which hotel you them. stay in? Uh, yes, it, <laughs> it does. There's a home hotel and an away hotel, right? Last yeah. week, the Jags were the home team against the Falcons. This week, the Bills are the home team against the Jags. The Bills could have been nice and said, no, you know what, you guys stay there. We'll take the away hotel. But this is gamesmanship, right? This yeah. is the gamesmanship, the mental games that you can play. They say, no, 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 you move hotels. We're the home team. We'll take that one. Yeah, either way, are the Jags back to, you know, from the fantasy standpoint, they did well. They scored well. Jaguars defense did fantastic. Now they got to face the Bills who just – put up monster numbers against Miami. Obviously on paper, you say the bills are going to win this game. Uh, most likely that is how it's going to happen. Uh, do I need to sit on my Jags players again? No, I mean, I think you can definitely play your Jags wide receivers. This game looks like it could be a shootout, could be a high scoring game, could be a lot of fantasy points. And, you know, for me, you know, president of the Trevor Lawrence fan club, I need <laughs> to see him show up in this game. He laid that egg against the Chiefs in a game that I thought he was going to upset the Chiefs and reannounce his arrival. He didn't do it at all. The Jags were awful in that game. Now they get another shot against the Bills, the other perennial powerhouse over the last yeah. few years. So let's see if he can have a better performance. A lot of people saying the Jags are frauds. I was a little offended, but, um, you know, two and two. They're two and two. They're 500. Your bills are only three and one. It's one game. Let's see yeah, what Didn't happens. they start like two and We're in week four. Last year before going on that run? Yeah, they sure did. We talked about that in the last show. Uh, that 100% did. Um, let's see. Titans and Colts. Ugh. Maybe not an exciting game. Yeah. I kind of got to give Indianapolis is favored to win this game, but I don't know if that's the case because the Colts bread and butter so far this year has been the run game between Richardson and Moss. Uh, JT is able to come back if, if he will or not. Again, it's all run and that's definitely Tennessee's bread and butter as well as stopping the run. So especially 
with King Henry getting fired up last week. I don't know if maybe the Titans don't go into Indianapolis and win this game. Uh, wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, if we're talking from a fantasy perspective, though, this game is pretty gross. Like, I don't really like oh, yeah. anything fantasy-wise because of, you know, you referenced that Titans rushing defense. Um, you know, Richardson's been very good this year. I don't think this is one of those weeks where I'm looking to get Richardson in my lineup. We talked about Stroud. Stroud's getting to playability. He's getting to the yeah. point where where you can play him because this week you go to the Falcons. Uh, we saw what Trevor did to him, and it's Trevor Lawrence. I'm not putting Tr- Trevor and Stroud in the same category just yet. Uh, but Stroud is getting it done. Even when they play from behind, they're putting up fantasy numbers. Uh, of course, we got Bijan in this game. Ritter's not getting it done, and so it hurts your Falcons wide receivers. But it, I can't believe I'm saying this. From a Texan standpoint of view, Stroud, Nico, Tank might have played. I mean, Nico and Tank, I think you, you got to play. And if you got to play yeah, them, I mean, Nico and Tank have like pretty much become like almost must starts, right? Yeah. Especially in a league where you can start three wide receivers, like they're almost like auto plays in those type of leagues uh, because of what they've done to this point, and they've both been, you know, pretty fairly consistent. When it comes to Stroud, um, he's not like a top ten quarterback for me this week, but he's fine as a starter. Like, let's say, you know, your starter's Watson, and if Watson's going to miss another game, let's say, perfectly fine to plug in a guy like Stroud, you know? Like, for me, I have him somewhere in that 10 to 15 range, which makes him, like, a fringe starter, not, like, a lock him in starter. You know where I want to where I want to look to play Stroud? DFS. DFS at the Falcons. I might throw a little uh, Stroud-Nico stack in there for pretty cheap. Grab myself some... Uh, High names after that. We'll talk about what they like are. I like uh, it. Panthers at the Lions. This should be another good one for offensive numbers, uh, especially for the Lions. I think the Panthers are giving up second most against RBs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, Montgomery's going to be the man. Gibbs is injured. We'll see for how long. And honestly, they kind of are really liking this other rookie that's been behind Gibbs, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this other guy get elevated up um, and possibly hold that spot. But Montgomery is definitely the hot, hot, hot guy right now. Yeah, I mean, Montgomery is a top five running back this week with RB1 potential this week on David Montgomery in this specific matchup, especially when you look at some of the other guys like your, you know, McCaffrey and Pollard facing off against each other in a tough fantasy type of environment, right? Both of those teams have very good defenses. Now, of course, you're still starting Pollard and McCaffrey. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this could be the week that somebody else takes that RB1 spot and a guy like David Montgomery is who I'm looking at. You know, you want to talk DFS? I'm getting Montgomery in a lot of my DFS lineups this week. This is an ideal matchup. Like you said, Gibbs a little bit banged up. Montgomery just had 32 carries last week. He really could be RB1 this week. Yeah, I'm trying to get a trade worked out on him this week. I'm I'm very close. Um, Saints at Patriots. Again, from a fantasy perspective, a DFS perspective, I don't know if this is somewhere I want to play anybody. A healthy car, I'd want to play Alave 100%. Alave and Thomas would 1,000% get the start. But if they put Carr in there again, I don't see how those guys are going to have any value just like last week if the Saints I'm passing on everybody in fantasy this week from that game except for Saints defense. Lock in Saints defense. That's not a horrible idea. Uh, Giants at Dolphins. Go everybody on the Dolphins. Find the fifth string wide receiver who's still on the practice squad. Play him because the Giants are absolute garbage, uh, and the Giants are going to Miami. Miami's going to look to bounce back and bounce back big after this loss to the Bills um, and reestablish their dominance. This is big for Dolphins players. Dolphins defense too. Play everybody on the Dolphins. I 100% agree. This game has blowout written all over it. Dolphins big, all their fantasy players big. Get them in your lineups, play them for DFS, pay up for them if you have to. The Dolphins offense is going to score a ton of points against that Giants defense, especially in Miami. This might be the week for Waddle. Waddle hasn't done anything this season. Uh, I think he's got 10 receptions on the season, no touchdowns. This might be the week. This might be the one they get him back on track. Ravens go to Pittsburgh. Pickett looking like he will play. I don't know that it's much going to matter. The Pickett-Pickens 
Pickett, pick, Pickett to Pickens matchup. Good Lord. Uh, has, has been torturing fantasy owners such as myself. Uh, a good week again to play Lamar. I, I know that defensive front in Pittsburgh is killing people. Like I said, they can get back there. This is going to be a week where they over pursue and Lamar comes out big, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's probably a big week for Lamar. He's never a lineup question anyway, right? Like, if you have Lamar, he's always in your lineup. Um, if we're talking DFS, I don't think I'd be targeting Lamar in DFS personally for me just because that pass rush can get after him. And I do agree with you, that could create some running lanes. And he's one of those, you know, when it comes to DFS, he has a very high ceiling because of that, but like I just don't like the floor with the way that you know the Steelers' defense can be sometimes, especially in these AFC North games, right? We talked about that a lot on our preview shows, that these AFC North matchups are usually ugly, yeah. tough, brutal, smack-you-in-the-mouth type of games, which usually results in lower scoring and defensive type of battles. So, you know, not super excited about fantasy for this game. No, probably not. Uh, Bengals at Cardinals. We're going to learn something in this one, and this is really going to be the telltale sign. If the Bengals cannot step up, even with injured Burrow, uh, sit him or not, if they cannot step up and handle this game against the Cardinals, they are going to be in a lot of trouble at 1-4. and four. Yeah, I mean, they're already in danger zone right now. If they mm-hmm. lose to the Cardinals and go 1-4, and four, the alarms can go off big time on the Bengals that this might end up being a disaster season for them. They're doing, like, just enough right now that they got that one win. They got the Cardinals up next at the perfect time for them, right? So if they can get back to two and three, they're still okay. They're still okay at two and three. But if they lose this game, they're in big trouble. Especially playing in the North where, you know, these teams beat up on each other all season. Uh, It's always coming down to some mathematical equation for the playoffs because they beat up on each other. So it's going to be these out of conference games, if you will, uh, <laughs> compare college comparison, but these out of conference games that are going to, mm-hmm. you know, out of division, I guess not out of conference, but out of division games that, that they need to step up. Uh, and that's how the NFC team, NFC North teams, uh, make it to the playoffs. So I've been winning. Let me just say it now out. though. If, if you're a betting man, put a little bit of money on the Cardinals this week. Why not? You can get them at a nice little price. They're playing a lot better than the Bengals right now. The Bengals being favored is simply just by name recognition. Now the Bengals probably will find a way to win this game, but if you want a good value bet, take the dog on the Cardinals. Look, Mixon was one of my sits. Mixon was one of those guys that's not playing well this year, and it has a lot to do with the fact that the Bengals' passing game is suffering. And look, look the Cardinals were never in that game. The San Francisco dominated every single aspect of that game, and yet they still were only a score down. They still fought yeah. back. They still put up fantasy numbers. Uh, you know, maybe a spread situation, bet against the spread. But uh, you know, if it's close enough, I'm not sure uh, if they put in it big enough. That, Lots of different ways you can take advantage of that game. I agree with you. Eagles at Rams. Rams defense absolutely horrible, so that helps the Eagles. But the Rams offense is playing. I think the Eagles still win this game. But I think you can get fantasy points out of, out of Rams at Eagles. Or, excuse me, Eagles yeah, at Rams. Yeah, like I think this is a pretty good fantasy type of situation. You're obviously playing all of your Eagles against a Rams defense that's like mediocre at best. Don't love Tyron Williams this week as much as I have the last few weeks because that Eagles defense can be tough sometimes. And when it comes to the receivers, I just need to know if Cup is playing or not. And if he is playing, like, you can't take Puka out of lineups this week with how good he's been. But I am very curious to see how that target distribution works when Cup eventually does come back. Yeah. Um, Jets at Broncos. Might be a night you might get something out of Garrett this week. I mean, Sertain's going to be on him, uh, for sure, but they'll create matchups where he's not. Uh, obviously, offenses can do stuff against the Broncos, Broncos, you know, can do something when they need to. I don't think you're going to get ginormous fantasy points out of e- either of these teams, but if you have players, this, this is a week where you can relax a little bit and go ahead and play them, whereas you might have been stressing more about it in the previous weeks. Oh, yeah, like I like Brees Hall this week. You know, this could be a breakout week for Brees Hall. If you have him on your lineups, get him in there. DFS, he's pretty cheap because he's been a letdown so far. He's a nice, cheap, high upside guy to get into DFS lineups. 
And if we're talking Jets running backs, like, can we just say it? We haven't talked about it yet. Dalvin Cook is toast, man. He's yep. done. Like, done. When you watch him run, he's got nothing left. Props done. to the Vikings for recognizing that and letting him walk and realizing that his time was over despite still having good numbers last year. He just looks completely done. You bring up the Vikings, Chiefs at Vikings. This should be a good one. Fan, offense guys, play them, play them, play them. Oh, yeah. Addison's the guy you got to watch out for. You know, puts a goose egg, you know, real bad numbers. I think he'll catch a couple balls. Look, he's not going to carry your team or anything like that. But if you have to play Addison, you, again, you can relax and go ahead and plug him in. Hopefully you got something better to put in there. But other than Addison, yeah, Chiefs and Vikings offense, go, go, go. Yeah, get them all in there, right? Get all of them in there this week. This is that game this week that looks like, you know, it can really be that big, high-scoring, everybody-can-eat kind of fantasy game. There's usually like one or two of those each week. This week, this looks like the one. Cowboys at Niners, game of the week. It's got the Sunday night game, deservedly so. This is what you have to play your starters. You got to, I mean... You got big names. They're getting you big points. Your Dak, your Purdy, Pollard, CMC, Ayuk, Lamb, uh, you know, even even Debo. Uh, they're going to play. I don't know how big your numbers are going to be. PPR format, sure, I can get with that. But let's be honest. These two defenses are two of the best defenses in the NFC, if not the NFL. And, and so... I don't know. These teams are good. The offenses are, are good. I actually kind of give the edge to the 49ers offense right now. Just barely, just barely, but I do because of CMC. Um, I, I don't, this is going to be a great game. It's going to be fun to watch. I don't know if it's going to give you a ton of points on your fantasy roster, but I'm not, I'm definitely not going to be the guy to tell you to sit anybody here. Yeah. I mean, you know, like the big guys have to start, even though it's not like the best environment for fantasy, you know, your Pollards and Lambs and, you know, Kittles and the Caffrey's, of course, you're starting all of those guys in your lineups. When it comes to the quarterbacks, though, for me, I'm actually looking elsewhere. I'm not looking to get Purdy or Dak. I'm not anxious to get either of them in my lineups this week. This is where a guy like a Stroud comes up, who we've talked about multiple times during this episode. If I have a choice this week between Dak, Purdy, and Stroud, I'm going Stroud this week. Fire me up with C.J. Stroud. Like, I can leave Dak and Purdy on my bench at this point. There you go. Um, Packers at Raiders on Monday night. Jordan Love should have a good game. I look for Aaron Rodgers. Or Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Jones was on a snap count. Watson was on a snap count. I think that'll loosen up against this Raiders defense. This is the game that your Green Bay Packers should do well. Las Vegas giving up tons of fantasy points. Uh, Garoppolo in or out. It doesn't matter. Um, Adam still did well. Adam did fine because uh, he's the man, but you're not going to get the same numbers that you would if Garoppolo played. Uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, this is the Devontae Adams game, right? The Devontae revenge game, playing the Packers again this week. Um, but it's not you know, really. The one guy you didn't mention was Josh <laughs> Jacobs, and Josh Jacobs could be in line for a big day because the Packers defense much better against the pass than they are against the run. You can run the ball on the Packers, so we're probably going to get a heavy dose of Jacobs. Yeah, this is one of those games I think you play your guys, like, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you play yeah. them, you play them because they're going to get stuff for you. It's you Monday know, Night Miracles. This can, you can get your Monday Night like, Miracle in this game. You know, like, are you playing Jacoby Myers this week? Like, that's the question mark for me. You know, like, he's like a real fence guy for me this week. Is it Jacoby Myers with a pretty good Packers passing defense and, like, you know, not great quarterback play from the Raiders? That's the only one I'm, like, on the fence about right now. Yeah, I hear you on that one. It's because he showed you something and then he got hurt. So we don't have – here we are, you know, week five, and we don't have a resume. That, mm-hmm. that I want to have in a game like this. So I, I hear you on that. Um, real quick as we wrap up the show, uh, wide receivers, you had Diggs, AJ, Nico, Puka, and JJ Jefferson. You know, as we ran through these games, we might see the same five as at the top five w- with the games that they Very have. Very well could. I mean, you know, no big surprises in that top five right there, and there's no reason to dislike any of them this week, kind of like you just alluded to. The only one, again, is Puka Nakua. If Cup does play this week, which my gut tells me he's not going to play this week and that he's not going to be ready yet, yeah. uh, he might, you know, but I don't think it's time yet for Cup. But if Cup does play, you know, like, what does that mean, you know? No, I agree. Um, 
Last week, wide receivers blew up. This week, only seven had over 100 yards. Only eight had more than 20 fantasy points. Four had 30, though. Um, but you had a lot of consistency. Uh, AJ, AJ had 16 targets. All right, so that's nice. But Puka catches 9 to 10. Michael Wilson catches 7 to 7. Ayuk catches 6 of 6. Berrios, people watching him right now, catches 6 of 6. Uh, Waddle better step up this week. Uh, the Washington receivers go 15 of 18 uh, between McLaurin and Samuel. Thielen went 7 of 8. Still finished it at wide receiver 20, but he's still definitely the man down there. Tight ends, Komet and Andrews here, top guys. Kelsey at 8. And Laporta and Henry, the guys you've been counting on, ended up at 17 and 18. That just shows you what we already know. Don't count on tight ends. Just play one unless it's Kelsey or Andrews. Even Kelsey finished at number 8, you're still going to play him. That is our show this week. We hope we gave you something good. We had some fun next week. Uh, join us Again, at 9.30 every Tuesday morning, we're going to do it live. We're going to do it with the Adam Hulse, Adam Hulse Sports, NFL writer at Sports Kita. Uh, just put in the slash Adam Hulse. You'll get all his great NFL content. You'll be call in now. So you'll be able to call in 757-598-EFIN-3346. I am Chris Fox at the FN Show on Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next week on that effing morning after show hope you guys have a great one good luck on your fantasy weeks we will see you guys next week